Welcome back to another segment of how to make a Pokemon better. For this week, we have Spidops. Spidops is a Pokemon that, in my eyes, isn't the absolute worst, but it's also pretty bad compared to its bug-type predecessors. It feels like it's middling. It's too bad for it to ever see true OU play outside of gimmicky sticky web strategies, but it's not bad enough to where you can make jokes about it for eons to come. We're not gonna make it so bad that it's joke worthy. We're gonna instead try to fix it to make it better, as is the point of this series. Which by the way, I hope you guys like the title. So first and foremost, let's take a solid look at Spidops itself. The design, even though I've given it flack, it's not the worst designed Pokemon around. And it's shiny is actually not bad. There, I said some positive stuff about it now. So now you can't come at me in the comment section as hard, okay? Now, before anyone says that it's a Route 1 bug and we should expect it to be bad, I'd like to point out that while not immediately on Route 1, Lokix is a pretty solid Pokemon that you can get in the Scarlet and Violet early game, so I don't see much of an excuse for its mediocrity here. Now, why is it mediocre? Well, firstly, it's stats. None of these stats are really any good, if at all. 60 HP, 79 attack, 92 defense, 52 special attack, 86 defense, and 35 speed are all pretty middling, with nothing reaching over a base 100. A base stat total of 404 in total. Not only that, but they gave it the rather unfortunate pure bug typing, which doesn't really do much offensively, and is absolutely mediocre defensively. This Pokemon doesn't hit hard, and it doesn't take hits very well. The only reason it's particularly of any value is because of its move pool. Its move pull has First Impression, Leech Life, U-Turn, Lunge, Circle Throw, Sucker Punch, Taunt, Low Kick, and even Spikes and Toxic Spikes. But as you can guess, none of these moves are the reason why it's any good. The reason why this Pokemon is any good is because it gets Sticky Web and Memento. Sticky Web lowers the speed of all grounded Pokemon that switch in, and Memento sharply lowers the attack and special attack of whatever it hits, at the cost that the Pokemon using it immediately faints. Yes, this is its role on a team. The set Sticky Webs, and then immediately sacrifice itself. Now, this isn't the worst idea on paper. You set up a means to lower the opposing Pokemon's speed, you lower the current Pokemon's attack, and then you bring in a brutally powerful setup sweeper to get a free turn to set up Nasty Plot, Swords Dance, or Dragon Dance. And then you try to win the game from there, or push a rather mean advantage state. In theory, this sounds great. In practice, there are three really good Pokemon with the ability Unaware in Scarlet and Violet that will ruin any setup strats you have. Or there are really good priority revenge killers that can and will force you out, if not outright KO your setup Pokemon. It's harder to pull off than it seems against a well-built team. Oh, and also, one of the most used Pokemon in OU, Great Tusk, is also the best rapid spinner in the tier by a decent bit. So rest in peace, Sticky Web. And for abilities, Stake Out and Insomnia. Stake Out is an ability that doubles your damage on a Pokemon that switched in this turn. It's prediction reliant, but it rewards you if you predict properly. The issue here is that doing double damage from a Pokemon as weak as Spidops still isn't doing much. Insomnia prevents you from being put to sleep, which is actually pretty solid with Amoongus and Breloom lurking around in the OU tier, but it isn't phenomenal. Not every team is going to run Amoongus and Breloom, and you probably want an overall more consistent ability. Not that this is a bad one to have. So before we learn how to buff it, let's actually look at what are likely to be considered better Sticky Webbers. So that way, we have ourselves a baseline to follow. Let's use the Premier Sticky Webber, and has been the most used one competitively since the debut of the move in Generation 6, Galvantula. Galvantula has a solid base speed of 108 and a special attack of 97. Of course, it had access to Sticky Web, but that's not all it used. It made rather great use of Volt Switch, Giga Drain, Bug Buzz, Hidden Power Ice before it got removed in Gen 8, Thunder Wave, and Thunder? Why does this Pokemon use Thunder? Well, because of its ability, of course, Compound Eyes. Compound Eyes raised the accuracy of its Thunder from 70% to 91%, making it a more reliable move than it otherwise would be. Having a secondary electric stab and coverage to hit one of its weaknesses made it just a tad bit more reliable than just setting up Sticky Web. 
While Sticky Web was absolutely its main purpose, and it played the role of a focus slash lead to ensure the webs went up, it wasn't all it could do, and could threaten frailer Pokemon with a surprising bit of damage. Keep in mind though, this thing itself was pretty frail, so it wasn't reliable to ever come in and take damage. Now, this is where I'd talk about Shuckle, but I actually plan to save that for a later day when I talk about a different bug type that is much, much worse. We'll get there when we get there. So rather than talk about it here and wind up treading old ground in a future video, I think I'm gonna put Shuckle in the back pocket and instead talk about a Pokemon that it actually competes with for a team slot in Scarlet and Violet OU. No, not you. I'm thinking more of Masquerain. Masquerain, however, has the excellent ability Intimidate, which lowers a Pokemon's attack by simply switching in. It's also the fastest Sticky Webber with the base 80 speed stat, definitely beating out Cricketune's base 65. And its overall stat spread feels weirdly okay. Base 70 HP and 82 special defense at least means it can live a special hit, while Intimidate gives it the ability to live a physical hit, so long as these hits are neutral and not super effective. It gets base 100 special attack, which means that this Pokemon can actually swing for some impressive damage rather than just set up Sticky Web and perish. Although it has only a base 60 attack. It makes solid use of U-Turn thanks to being able to come back in and intimidate and maybe even set up the Sticky Webs again if they get removed. And strangely, its move pull kind of supports its special attack stat pretty well. Bug Buzz, Giga Drain, Shadow Ball, Ice Beam, and this thing happens to get Quiver Dance as a means to support its potential attacking endeavors. Sure, it's no Volcarona, but having a Sticky Web Setter that can act as a Quiver Dancer is a niche exclusive to this Pokemon, and I think that's rather fascinating. What holds it back from being outright good is that the bug and flying typing is pretty poor defensively. And if you want your Masquerain to come back in after one round of Sticky Webs, you're forced to use the heavy duty boots. Ah, the bug flying type combination. How you've plagued many Pokemon with your defensive ineptitude and offensive meagerness. So with comparisons now drawn to other Sticky Webbers, what have we noticed? We've noticed that they typically have something to do other than set up Sticky Web. They have some sort of offensive utility. While they are at times very frail, they at least can actually threaten another Pokemon in case setting up Sticky Web isn't a good option versus the opposing team. They have stats that actually reach or exceed base 100, so they can be classified as actually being good at something. They also have a secondary stab for either offensive or defensive purposes that gives them more of a niche than if they were just a pure bug. So now we know exactly what we need to change about Spide Ops, at least to some degree. There is one thing I actually wish not to do, and that's edit Spide Ops' speed. I feel they made it base 35 on purpose and wanted this thing to intentionally be slow. So it's everything else about Spide Ops that I will be taking into account to make it better than it is. With that, let's begin. So first and foremost, let's discuss the stats. I'm gonna be a little generous with the buffs given to our friend here, given that he's going to need them if he wants to stand out as a good Sticky Webber amongst the much better competition. With the base stat total of 404, we can give this thing quite a decent buff before it becomes a little too much. The goal is to make it feel more usable, not make it broken after all. And what I'd like to give a buff to first is actually its HP and defenses. Most Sticky Webbers tend to be frail with the purpose of coming in and dying. This is true, but I personally think if we want to give Spide Ops a unique role, we need to give it a more unique stat spread. We can take its HP and increase it from 60 to 94. It's quite the exponential HP buff, I will admit, but I think it's necessary here. With how slow it is, you want it to be able to survive a hit to set up Sticky Web without having to rely on the Focus Sash. So having more HP and more defenses is going to be able to help with its niche. I also propose we take the defense and special defense of the Pokemon and improve them by 10 each, bringing them from 92 to 102 and 86 to 96 effectively. Lastly, I wanna give a minor buff to its attack stat and bring it from a measly 79 to a much more usable 91. This would make his overall base stat total 470. I want this Pokemon to be able to make better use of its options, such as U-Turn and First Impression, so that way it can actually put some extra offensive pressure on an opponent to give its teammates just a bit more momentum when coming in. 
Personally, I think this is a fine set of buffs without being overwhelming in the stat department, especially since there are still stronger bugs by a mile, like Volcarona, Scizor, Heracross, and Low Kicks. As for abilities, Stakeout still isn't all that good, and I don't quite think Insomnia does it. No, I think we need to give this thing a third ability. If only you can force the opponent to guess whether you're immune to sleep, or not to play mind games with an opponent wanting to use sleep powder or spore. I'd want to say Sniper, but Sniper doesn't really help that much for this covert operative. So I'd say instead, what about Bulletproof? This is admittedly mostly because I think that Spidops looks like it's wearing a bulletproof vest. But also, since we're trying to give this thing more of a defensive profile to give it more unique attributes that other sticky weapons don't have. Being immune to stuff like Rock Blast, Shadow Ball, Sludge Bomb, and especially Electro Ball with that speed stat may come in pretty handy. And lastly, this is the one I've actually been wanting to discuss the most, even if it may be potentially jarring at first. I want to give this Spidops a secondary type. I think that pure bug isn't the best, and I want to give this thing a type combo only used on one other Pokemon, and that's Bug and Ghost. Now, hear me out, because I understand what you may be thinking. Why? What purpose? What gives you the idea that this thing comes off as a ghost? And I'm completely willing to explain that part first. Spidops is inspired from a stealth operative. Its Pokedex entry even states that it moves around without making a sound and takes out enemies before they ever notice it, and that it sets up traps in its nest for intruders. Something stealthy like this and hard to track can beat before you ever know it and likely doesn't leave much of a trace behind? Like a stealth operative? I could be stretching here, but I think Spidops is trying pretty hard to be a ghost. And for what competitive purpose? Well, rapid spin blocking. There is not a single bug type that can both set up a hazard and block those hazards from being removed to my immediate knowledge. Given it the ghost typing gives Spidops a niche that no other bug type in the entirety of the Pokedex has, and that's the power to both set up sticky webs and handle the rapid spinners that would try to clear them. Offensively? No one ever dislikes having Ghost Stab, and he's already had access to Shadow Claw this entire time. I'd say give it Poltergeist 2, but that's not even in Gen 9, so we'll have to see if it comes back in a later game first. Yeah, you develop two new weaknesses, but in return, you get two immunities and a handy resist to poison, so I'd say it's a worthwhile trade. A bug slash ghost sticky webber would not only be unique in its role, but personally, I just think it'd be sick, especially for something with Spidops' Pokedex entry and roots. And for move pull? I think its move pull is fine, but there are two moves I do want to give it, if only because I think it makes sense and I think they'd be nice additions. Give our boy Infestation and Shadow Sneak. I know it already has First Impression and Sucker Punch, but hey, having Shadow Sneak on there wouldn't hurt our newly found ghost type. And Infestation just feels correct to give it to a bulky bug type. You know, being able to trap something, like the Pokedex entry says it does. It also isn't the worst feature to give to the guy. That's all I'm saying. And that's it. That's what I want to do to fix Spidops. Buff its stats, give it a secondary typing, a new ability to work with that makes it feel more like the agent it wants to be, and two additional moves to help give it some extra moveset variety. I think that this version of Spidops would be much more usable, and actually a strong competitor for a Sticky Web's team setter. But what do you guys think? How would you guys buff it? A different ability maybe? Keep it a pure bug type? And take a different route with how you want to play? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. We're finally here in 2023, and I'm super excited for what this year has to offer us. There's potential DLC for Scarlet and Violet on the horizon, and who knows just what else Game Freak may have up their sleeves. It's going to be really exciting times coming up for a Pokemon fan. If you're interested in more Mystic content, check out my TikTok and Mystic Umbreon Shorts YouTube channel. I've got a really fun series starting up there very soon, and of course, have a weekly edition of my Should You Use series focusing on Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet. Also, if you're into fan fictions and what ifs, check out Mystic Reads. I offer a ton of creative spoken word content on there, so come join me. Thanks again for joining me today, and I'll see you all next time.